Hi, it's Karen here back with Karen Coates, and I am going to show you how we can proceed with our Java memory game GUI application. And just to get started here, I uh, revised the, the diagram a little bit to make it a little more obvious uh, what our game plan is. So uh, where the smiley face is would be an icon, and this whole component here is just part of the J frame. And there's two arrows because J frame has two basic parts. It has this title bar and then it has the blue area that you see nested behind the J label, J panel, and J buttons. And so what I did is I revised it from the previous time I made this. Before, I would just have a grid, a 4x4 grid of images to match, and it would just cut off right here. And I thought it would be a better implementation to add a label that included an, an update of how many matches the people have, have made. And, and then another button, J button, to allow the user to play a second time. And the, the fun thing about how the game is implemented or programmed, you can randomly generate the card images so they're not always going to be in the same spots. And so every time you play the game, it's a new game. And I could add a functionality where it kept track of how many times you played and how long it took you to win. But that starts to get a little more complicated because then you need some database implementation to keep the permanence and so that the game you can vary like where you put the close for the de set default close operation and and make it go that way so that it stores it the whole time your window's open but that gets a little too complicated so anyway those are the changes that we're going to go about and let me just show you really quickly what I did to get a window to appear. So the first thing I did is I came into the memory game app class. And you don't have to name it .java. It happens automatically when you choose Java class. So you'd go new and then class. And it automatically adds the .java to the end of your name. And remember, you want to capitalize it. And this part right here, the serial version ID, I'm just going to show you what that means real quick. So I'll delete. There's a yellow squiggly line, and when you hover over it, it lets you add a generated serial ID. And so I did that, and that's just all that that does. And you can see the little squiggles for the comment lines, and I just got rid of that. And I'm going to go ahead and add in, while we're at it, the Java doc to kind of show you how you do that. And it's pretty simple. Oh, let me. Haha. Uh -huh. It automatically put my last name in there because that's who my computer is assigned to as a user, is Chidister. But I'm putting my first name in there. And this is basically just a memory game. So I'm just going to quickly say, hey, memory game for Christmas. And yours can say whatever you want it to say. You can say, um, at these are all the options you can say what version it is and i'm going to give it the version of today's date which is 12 5 2017 and each day will change and you can do an additional thing like dot one and the next time you save it do something else but anyway that's just one of the ways you can play around with the java doc and then I'm going to get rid of a couple of extra lines. Now, if you notice this class, I wrote in extends and then JFrame. And when you do that, at first, it's going to give you red squiggles. And what you're going to want to do is choose to import the Java X swing version of JFrame. And if I hover on it, this is called a Java doc, the part that pops up. And so by putting these little comment codes right here, this will pop up if someone hovers over my class somewhere else. So let me just show you that real quick. So we're going to do the little javadoc symbols here. And we're going to do at author again. 
and let's say this um, this is the game frame so game frame class builds the game window or plane surface for the cards okay and you can say whatever you want there but now when I come in here I to my public static void main method um, I've, I've got this line of code that I wanted to explain it says event Q with a capital Q and a capital E dot invoke capital L for later and then new runnable runnable oh let's come back here to the hover again runnable is an interface and you can, there's different kinds of inheritance for programming languages java only lets you inherit from one class but you can implement as many interfaces as you want and runnable would be an example of an interface that you could implement and you could look up the the code for what that means later on but basically within this object runnable we have a method run that we have to implement and so we also have to define well what is that method and so we're telling it to uh, try catch this is a way to handle errors that could come about you put your code inside a try catch block and so what you want to try to have it run and then if it doesn't work catch an error that's what the exception e is for and so game frame i'm hovering over it and as you can see it has my name and it has just a little description that i wrote on the other page and that just kind of gives you an idea of what happens with java doc and then you say new game frame because i had to create a new instance of game frame in order for it to appear and then i said catch the exception e and java.ling tells you all about exceptions you can throw exceptions you can catch them it's basically errors that could happen but you want to understand why they're happening so the e which is the name variable name for exception in this case it just lets you print the stack trace that's all the, the red lines that come down here and give you a description as to why something's broken and that's all we have in our main class and then we have because this runnable started with an open parentheses we had to put a close one right here and a, and a semicolon and then this curly bracket right here when you hover over it you can oh sorry when you hover over it Let's hover over this one. It shows you what is contained in your curly brace so that you can make sure, oh, did I close where I needed to close? And like right here, oh, this is for run. And indentation really helps you identify, well, where your code is and where things go. And this is for the whole thing. It also kind of gives you an idea of scope when you hover over it like that. It's like, oh, this is where things will apply. So that's that case. And then game frame. In order for this to work, I had to type set title. And if you start typing set, it'll pop up all your options. Or no, it won't. That's funny. Okay, never mind. <laughs> so we're going to end this video here because it's already getting kind of long. And then the next video, we'll go into the detail on this. Or you can just pause and copy the code. And the only difference you're going to have is within your memory game images, you're not gonna have kclogo.ping. So see right here, I, that's what I have. You're gonna have whatever you copy and paste into that spot for images. And so make sure you match the name, the case, and then the extension, because it can be ping, it can be JPEG, or it can be GIF. So whichever image file type you choose, that's what you're gonna put there. So go ahead and pause and knock out this image or this code and I'll come back in the next video and show you what how it looks what happens with it thanks for watching